So you've come here for the truth. Well, we've got the truth and nothing but the truth. Here are your hosts, Robert A. Bianchi and David J. Bruno. Welcome to WMTR Radio's Nothing But The Truth. Your host, Bob Bianchi and Dave Bruno. Dave, I am so psyched and excited. We have our good friend Shannon Bream with us. For those, I'm sure everyone knows her. If you don't, you need to uh, you know check yourself out here. Shannon is an attorney by trade. That was her degree. And then she went into journalism after practicing for a while. She's on Fox News and uh, has a show, Fox News at Night. We often appear at the night court. And, you know, Dave, I've always said this about Shannon. Uh, of all the legal uh, hits that we do she is the kindest most decent uh anchor that we're in front of always make sure she comes on beforehand to say hello and how you doing which is really rare um and i i think that we're going to learn something because she's not only a great anchor and she's not only a a, a brilliant person and and a smart attorney but she's also an author and uh, her new book is just really amazing, The Mothers and Daughters of the Bible, Lessons of Faith from Nine Biblical Families. And, you know, when I was reading the book, it, it, it dropped right in as to why Shannon is who she is. Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, Shannon, she films down in D.C., and Bob and I are both in New Jersey, and we go into the New York studio. And um, oftentimes, we're in a pod when we do her show. But we're so fortunate because when Shannon comes into New York, oftentimes, we're both able to go into the studio and see Shannon. And Shannon, I will never forget the one time that we were on set with you, and the news came on that George Bush Sr. died. Literally at the commercial break when we were on set with you and you had to deliver the news to the nation. And Bob and I were right there with you on set. We didn't move. And we had the opportunity to see you at your best Mm -hmm. because honestly, I I can attest to this, that Shannon did not have a teleprompter. She did not have notes in front of her. And she was able to go into the president's background and his military experience and all the accolades. And Shannon, I'll never forget that. I was amazed. And not only are you an excellent person, a great legal scholar, but intelligent as I've ever seen. And I want to thank you. Well, thank you guys. That's really too much over the top. But listen, you guys know I have a great team and that's what it takes in those moments. Um, Fox News at Night has a great group of writers and producers and researchers. um, And you guys get to interact with them as well. They're my work family, but really family in a lot of ways. So when we have those big moments and you do go without a prompter for two hours and just have to ad lib, uh, it's very much a team effort. And we're so thankful when you guys are willing to lend us your legal expertise. And we ask you to argue about all kinds of crazy things, like whether they're are actually strawberries and strawberry pop tarts but even if it's that or if it's something more serious you guys are always game for the the night courts that we do so thank you yeah the um what was it defending the satan church was the one that of of course being a faith-based person like yourself i'm like oh my gosh i gotta but you were very kind to say by the way bob's only arguing a legal position here it's not that we he did not choose this like yes i would love to argue on the church of satan's behalf he did he did not but he was good enough and a great enough lawyer that he could do it effectively because we asked him to (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Shannon, I didn't really, uh, I wasn't thinking of starting this way, but um, I, I really love the faith-based aspect of who you are. And I know that there's so much controversy that goes on about whether you're faith-based or not. When I was the county prosecutor, I was in a political position appointed by the governor to the job. And my faith often was brought up, um, you know, about it not being correct that I was a faith-based person. As a prosecutor, I felt that, you know, praying in church before sentencing day was important for me to make sure that I was I was measuring punishment with mercy and compassion in the appropriate spots. But what you do for a living and what we do for a living is very rough. I watch you on TV all the time. I mean, you're dealing with the Ukraine. You're, you're dealing with all sorts of calamities, political arguments, divisiveness. Does your faith carry you through in terms of you center yourself when you're doing all that? Because you can be really depressing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And yes, um, and that really hit home for me during COVID in a big way because so many of the stories that we cover, you can have a bit of distance from it. I mean, right, if there's a hurricane or a natural disaster or war, um, you certainly empathize and are stunned. And, you know, it's gut wrenching to watch these uh, people who are suffering in these images. But there's a part of you that could do your job, go home and say, let's pray for these people, but let's have dinner now and decompress and, you know, have our home life and be happy. When COVID hit, there was no escaping it for any of us. I mean, 
we don't want to be the story, but everybody was the story in COVID, mm-hmm. right? Because everybody um, either got sick or had someone they loved got sick, or there was just so much anxiety and unknown, especially in the beginning, or you're trying to keep your job together, see if you can do it remotely, or if you can't, if you're going to have to step in and risk your life every day to go to work, um, or your kids and managing school and remote. And I mean, there was just so much stress for everybody. And it was a reminder to me that I have to be grounded in my faith. So for me, that's uh, a morning thing. I, I, I get up, I say morning, but you know, I go to bed at like 2.30 because of my job, 2.30 a.m. So morning is more like 10 or 11-ish for me. But before I get started on the day, it's really important for me to try to pray, um, read the Bible. For me, journaling is very helpful too. Um, I've got my list that I keep going for other people who have desperate needs to try to pray for them. And all of that gives me perspective. Like, Listen, God is not unaware. You know, the New Testament tells us when Christ was walking this earth, he suffered in every way that we have as human beings. So he identifies in that and he is not um, some lofty being who hasn't experienced or doesn't understand that. So I take great comfort in all of that. Yeah, You know, but congratulations on your fourth book. Thank you. Excellent. And, you know, I think my biggest takeaway from the book, from what I've read, is that the, the mothers and daughters suffered. Right. And it's there's a process through this. And I think it puts things into perspective from what we've been going through with COVID and even Ukraine, that there is a process and it's not always good. Right. Can you speak to that about some of the characters in the book and why that's important? Yeah. I mean, even from the very first pair that we talk about in the new book, Mothers and Daughters of the Bible Speak, we have Jochebed and Miriam, who are the mother and the sister of Moses. So mother and daughter. And if you're familiar with this story, uh, it's really moving. But, you know, even in that, if, if there's that familiarity, I always find it's helpful to reset. These women were slaves. I mean, they were not free. The Hebrew people were under Egyptian uh, oppression and Pharaoh was so threatened by how well the Hebrew people were doing, growing, and God was blessing them um, that he sent out this decree that any woman, Hebrew woman that had a baby, if it was a boy, it had to be cast into the Nile and killed, which is horrific if we really put that in modern day terms. It's crazy to think that mothers would be asked or forced to do that. And in the midst of that, Jochebed is pregnant with Miriam or with Moses. She already has Miriam and Aaron. And so she's pregnant with Moses. And what happens is um, she sees him. And when he's born, um, scripture tells us that, that Moses' parents found something really special in him. And she decided to make this very brave decision in a time and place where she didn't really have any choices or decisions in her life. And she was going to defy this murderous edict and said, I'm going to save my baby. So she does that until she can't hide him any longer. And then of course, the story about her making this little mini arc sort of for him and launching him into the Nile, which I think is such a juxtaposition that that's where he was going to be sent to die. But that's where she sends him to try to preserve his life. And Pharaoh's daughter hears him crying and sees him. And we're told immediately has compassion on this Hebrew baby and um, wants to raise him as her own. So So little Miriam, brave, is watching this whole thing, steps up out of the bushes and says, hey, if you need a Hebrew woman to nurse him, I know somebody. So she is there to um, step up at a time when she was, you know, had no value in society as this young slave girl and risk her life to make sure that her brother would be safe. And of course, he's the central figure in Exodus and um, with, with God's divine intervention, leading the people, the Hebrew people out of this slavery and oppression. And all of that's made possible because Jochebed and Miriam were faithful and they were brave and courageous. Um, But when we meet them, they're very much in a place of suffering and God wasn't unaware. He knew exactly what was happening in their lives. And that's true of all of these stories uh, through both books. And I think today too, in 2022, he knows and sees us. Yeah, you know, Shannon, it's, um, I think every faith pretty much talks a lot about suffering. And we know the ultimate sufferer in our faith was Jesus. Um, And that God actually allowed himself through his son to come and suffer, to go through the world, to be both human as well as divine, and to go through this process of suffering. And I think a lot of times people that are Christians really forget the idea, like, why is this happening to me? How come this is happening to me? And not seeing the resurrective story. Can you talk to that a little bit in your mind based on the characters in the book? Yeah, and I think we can all identify with that. I mean, we've all had times in our in our lives where we do suffer and we go through dark valleys and people that we love go through really dark valleys and sometimes um, leave us uh, from this earth in their own suffering and their physical pain. Um, you know, there's also a mental and emotional struggles and pain that people go through. And I've had experience with both of those things. So um, I, I do think we have to reset ourselves as much as we can um, as people of faith to say, 
there is a purpose in suffering. None of it, I think, is wasted. It's made me a much more empathetic person, first of all, to say, you don't know what that person at the desk next, next to you or at the grocery next to you, you don't know what they're suffering through right now. So it opened my eyes and my heart in that way to go through my own suffering, um, but also to, to think that you can use it in, in ministering mm-hmm. to other people. Um, and I think that's a really important thing. And, and you know, again and again, we see in these women's stories through the books um, that they suffered and they sought help. And one of my favorites is a woman who we don't even have her name, but she's all throughout the gospels. We're told that when we meet her, she's penniless because she spent everything she had trying to find a cure for this bleeding disorder that she'd had for 12 years. So no cure, not any better, probably worse and no money and no options left. And she would have been an outcast in that society. She would not have been somebody that would be allowed to go to temple or to the markets or to be around other people. But she hears about Jesus and she believes there's something divine there. And she's like, if I can just get close enough to him to touch the hem of his garment, that's going to be enough to heal me. And that's exactly what she does. She breaks all the rules, goes straight to Jesus, doesn't ask permission. But the minute it happens, she's immediately healed. And he knows that something has happened. The power has gone out from him. And um, we're told that he turns around and says, who touched me? And she knows that he knows. She knows he's divine at this point for sure. And we're told in all the accounts, she falls down before him trembling. She is terrified that she's been busted. And instead of publicly berating her for reaching out and touching and not asking permission for this healing or for this miracle and for even leaving her home, in all of the accounts, Jesus says to her, daughter, that's the first thing he says. And I love that. That's why I didn't include her in this Mothers and Daughters of the Bible, because God himself called her daughter. And he says to her, you know, your faith has made you whole. Like what you did in stepping out was the right thing. Um, But clearly he was the one that divinely healed her and he gave her blessing. And and for her to go on in her life then, think about everybody who knew in her family or her community that she had suffered so much and had this disorder. Um, It would have taken over her whole life. So for her to now have all those 12 years of suffering and be able to go back to all these people and say like, I'm healed. This guy did this. He's really the son of God. I believe he's the Messiah. Um, What a testimony that her 12 years of suffering weren't for nothing. They weren't lost. It turns out to be one of the greatest witnesses to anybody else in her life who knew what she had suffered and then saw this complete redemption. Wow, that's amazing, Shannon. Well, this is WMTR Radio. It's nothing but the truth. Shannon Bream, now you know why she is who she is. Uh, We're going to be back on the other end of the break. Please stay with us. At the Bianchi Law Group, our team of former prosecutors and certified criminal trial attorneys specialize in criminal defense and domestic violence cases. When you need a law firm with courage, compassion, and the commitment to fight for you. Call the Bianchi Law Group today. Welcome back to WMTR. It's nothing but the truth with Bob Bianchi and Dave Bruno. We have Shannon Bream. She's throwing down the wisdom in the in the Bible and, and giving us a real deep insight into, uh, I, I can personally attest to, I actually, Shannon, feel uh, sad uh, for people that don't have a deep relationship with a faith. Um, I, I don't proselytize as to what your faith should be. Mine's Catholic, uh, and I, I, I'm deeply devout, uh, and it, it's made a difference so much in my life. And, and I look at your forward, and you uh, end a quote with Genesis uh, in, in your forward where it says, uh, you are your introduction, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And I kind of want to pick up on the theme that you were talking about before, that sometimes we don't I think that if you have an eye towards looking at what is God telling me, um, some people will call this a coincidence. I had it happen to me when I literally became the prosecutor. Somebody said, it's coincidence. I said, it's not. It was all the suffering, all the work, all the things I did when I just said, it's not going to happen for me. And I let go. I really believe that it was at that point in time when a crazy thing happened politically. And I got the call, do you want to be the prosecutor? And I had moved, I left my political base and the whole thing. And people were like, God, what a coincidence. And I'm like, no, that, that was God working. He was working my suffering to say, when you let go, I will give it to you. Now, some people could say, Bob, that's crazy. But I look at everything through that lens. Tell me about in your mind, Shannon, um, the difference in your life when you look at at the things that happen through the lens of faith as opposed to just the lens of I'm muscling life out on my own. Yeah, I think it's such a comfort to know, like, listen, somebody else is in charge. I cannot micromanage and I am a control freak who has to fight that all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but when I really let go and say, God, even if I am not willing, sometimes I pray, make me willing, like help me to be willing to let go of these things so that I can trust you more, so that I can have more peace and contentment in life, knowing 
you're not sleeping. No, I, no one's sleeping on the watch. I mean, God knows what is going on. Nothing is a surprise to him and he does have a plan. So um, when I can really keep myself in that place, it takes a lot of stress out of life and to know like, listen, he's orchestrating things. Um, I've had times in my life where I tried really hard to make things happen. I mean, I got fired from my very first TV job. I had left my practice in law and had gone to TV and um, I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I started out grunt work. Like I was working overnights and answering phones and making coffee and all those things, but it was great. I learned from every bit of it. But once I had been at that for about a year and I started to occasionally get a chance to um, be a reporter and go out in the field, I was so excited to have this opportunity. And and the guy who gave me that opportunity left my station. His boss left. There was a whole management change. The new guy came in and he did not see the um, the skills or the, <laughs> the attraction of putting Shannon Bream on TV when she didn't know what she was doing. And he fired me and told me it was terrible and I would never make it. And I was so crushed, so crushed. And it was months before I can even get anybody to return my call to interview me for anything. And I prayed a lot during that time, like, God, I know there's a lesson in this. And I can see looking back on it, what that time of waiting and of frustration and embarrassment, all of that, it, it makes sense to me now. But I had to completely let go and say, all right, Lord, I can't love my career more than I love you or trust you. So I've got to let this go. And he has scripted a very strange but wonderful path for me in that. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful story. You know, it kind of reminds me of us a, a, a passage that I always like and, and that we, we say in our churches, I believe, but help me with my unbelief from the Bible, the Roman soldier uh, that was saying that right. um, to, to Jesus. I, and I think that a lot of times, Sean, I'm curious of your opinion about this, that people want to be faithful, and they, but they, they find it hard, especially in today's world, maybe every generation can say this, that I, but I just don't completely believe that it's okay not to be perfect. That's the part. It's, it's moving in that direction. What do you think about that? Yeah, you're exactly right. And we are flawed. God knows we are human beings with goodness. Uh, you know, as our world advances, there are more and more distractions and things to pull you away and to soothe your emotions or to distract you um, that are not God. Anything short of him is going to leave us kind of wondering and, and searching and still wanting something else. So everything we pursue and chase after that's not him could be a short-term fix. It's not going to be a long-term fix. But I love that the Bible does not um, sugarcoat these characters um, all throughout uh, women in the Bible speak and also now mothers and daughters of the Bible speak. I include plenty of flawed people because we're all flawed. And I love that these stories um, show us women and men in their very human flawed form. And, and God um, has looked at some of them who have done some of the worst things and use them. And they've wound up in beautiful parts of the Bible and important parts of the story that he was weaving and knitting together. So I think that's encouraging to us that, listen, we're all going to make mistakes. We're going to be unfaithful at times. We're going to get off track. That's okay. I think God understands as long as we are striving and, and trying to seek him, um, he's going to reward that and he can work through even our messes. And, mm -hmm. and that's a big message of this book that I hope will encourage people. We don't have to be perfect because we can't be. Yeah, well said. I mean, look, thank you for sharing, Shannon, about your first job and being fired. And look, I think a lot of people can relate to that. I know I could relate personally through some of my struggles that I look back and say, wow, this is why I'm here right now in this seat with Bob With Bianchi. the greatest partner in the world. I, 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 I can't well, disagree. See what with happened? You. <laughs> <laughs> and literally too like going through covid i could point to one experience that we had together that really molded what our business is this firm to expand yeah but it wasn't even you know dave i i, I didn't even think of that but it's true it was a, a pivotal moment for us both personally yeah okay and yeah. professionally um and it seemed so dire and down and why and how come and we wound up taking a long ride together and it changed our not only our business but our lives as well and that's that's putting faith in action. We're, we're not going to be down. We're going we're gonna to find the positive in this bad situation. And yeah, and looking back on it, I mean, we, we pivoted from that situation to where we are now. And, and again, Shannon, a lot of people can relate to that. Um, Shannon, is there a particular character in either your fourth book, uh, The Mothers and Daughters of the Bible, or your third, that you could relate to personally the most? And if so, 
What character was that? You know, I, I talked about this woman who had struggled with physical uh, trouble and I've always felt a connection with her. I, I truly believe that one day when I get to heaven, I will get to meet her and talk to her about this um, because I went through a very difficult struggle myself years ago, um, a couple years of a chronic illness and, and excruciating pain, con- constant cr- chronic pain um, that made it hard to function in life and going doctor to doctor. And I know many people listening will know this experience. Um, of just trying to get a diagnosis and living in that chronic pain. Um, I've always loved that this woman kind of was so vulnerable and just went to God like, you know, I got nothing left. I'm just going to trust you that this is this is going to be my healing and this is going to be the way this is. Now, also in the Bible, I take great comfort in the stories where people aren't healed or not in the way that they had hoped or thought. Um, I think about Paul in 2 Corinthians where he had a thorn in his side and we can debate and, and not anybody is really sure exactly what that was, but he asked repeatedly for God to take it away from him. And God said, I'm not going to do that, but my strength will be sufficient in your weakness. And that was kind of my experience with um, my my own physical uh, situation um, that I, I became very, very discouraged and depressed in a very dark place, you know, two years into living in almost constant pain. Um, it was very difficult, but I took um, real encouragement from that woman stepping out in faith. I took courage from Paul and from his story. And um, when I finally did find a doctor to diagnose me, it was truly an answer to prayer. I had prayed, God, if you're not going to heal me, please send me somebody who can get me through this, who can be with me in this and help me to understand. And it literally was the next day that I found this doctor. And so I kind of like to embarrass them sometimes when I go in, I'm like, don't forget you're my answer to prayer. And he's sort of like, (laughs) okay, that's weird, but thank you. Um, But he's a good sport about it because he knows he was, but he told me when he diagnosed me, um, there's no cure for what you have, which was a huge blow to me and uh, to feel like that wasn't going to be my story. But he has been able to ha- help me manage it, manage it. And in my prayer after I left that office, I was really emotional. And I can remember feeling not that I audibly heard the voice of God, but that he said to me, I will be with you. I will be with you. Not I'm going to heal you. This is going to be easy, but I'll be with you. And he has been, he's been faithful to walk me through the darkest parts of my life, maybe not resolving them in the way I would want them to be resolved, um, but being faithful and being present. Jenna, that, I guess we could trade stories, but I, that, that's a beautiful story. And again, that's where somebody can look at it as a coincidence, as opposed to somebody who's looking at it through the lens of faith saying, no, that's through prayer. I, I, you, you, I think you'll like the story. Dave will know what I'm talking about. I, I was in a very dark uh, moment in my professional career, and I, I'm very open about this. I speak around the country about how to live a joyful life, and, and a lot of it comes from my lessons in suffering. And this was dark, and, and I was like, didn't know where to turn. I went to church, and it wasn't. I needed something, so I went to Barnes and Noble. I'll never forget this. And I was like, I know there's a book here, and I know you're not going to get. I got the Bible, I got, but I need something else. Lord, please bring me to the space. And I looked everywhere and everywhere, and I I couldn't find anything. And as I was leaving uh, the store, and it took me a lot to even get up to go to the store. Okay, it was that kind of period of my life. Uh, somebody said, "Hey, you," and I turned around. It was somebody talking to somebody else. And right in front of me, at a rack that I did not see, was a was a book called Jesus Calling, which was a oh, daily such devotional. Such a good book, right? And oh, so I, good. I was just, I was like, that is not a coincidence, right, Shannon? So I right, mean, exactly. Yeah, I, I know our time's limited. We got about a minute and a half left, but um, talk to me about faith in action, or, or, or how that in action makes you treat people differently than you th- think you would had you not had faith as a centerpiece in your life. Yeah, and you know, we all want to think that we would be independently good, and I think that there is goodness in all of us. But you know, when Christ was asked to boil down the law, He said, "Love your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and spirit, but love your neighbor as yourself." which sounds deceptively simple because what that means is whatever you, however you would take care of yourself and treat yourself, you got to do that for your neighbor. And that's not, if it's somebody you totally agree with, it could be somebody that you disagree with that you don't see the world the same way. Um, we're not called to pick and choose. I mean, everybody is made in the image of God and whether we agree or disagree on things, I think we owe them basic human respect and beyond because we're asked to treat them as we ourselves love ourselves. We're all selfish beings. I'm going to just own up to that. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's one of the biggest things we all fight, but if we're looking at other people and wanting the best for them, wanting them to be treated with fairness and justice and kindness, that does doesn't mean we have to agree on things or on issues, but it does mean that we have to treat people as somebody who is made in God's image that he loves and cares about. Um, how can we not, when he's extended us such mercy, then turn around um, and not give that to other people? So it definitely 
colors the way that I see people, um, whether I think um, we see eye to eye on things or anything. Um, I think there's just that basic treatment uh, that we're called to as people of faith. You know, Shannon, I, I could talk to you for hours about this. Um, you know, it, it was so, that's one of the reasons why as prosecutor, for example, I said, you will never refer to a, a, a defendant, another human being in the names that they were being referred to. There, we, we don't judge people. That's for a higher authority. We judge conduct. And if you start to objectify people that way, then all of a sudden you look at them as the other or something that's that's expendable and that you need to look at mercy and forgiveness. And, and I think we were a better office uh, for it. So I, I agree completely. And Shannon, you are just such an amazing woman and, and a good friend because I know that everyone wants to talk to you. Everyone wants Shannon Bream, a part of Shannon Bream, because you, you are an inspiration and you are such a decent human being in addition to the skills as a professional. To me, you're secondary as to who you are as a person. So thank you for taking the time uh, to be with us. And um, Dave, uh, we want to close out the show. Yeah, congratulations on the fourth book. The Mothers and Daughters of the Bible Speak, Lessons on Faith from Nine Biblical Families. Shannon, where can everyone get it? You know what? You can go to anywhere you like to get books. You can go back to that place where Bob had his epiphany with Jesus Calling, which is also a great book. Um, it's everywhere. If you want a signed copy, because I do get asked about that, you can go to signedshannonbook.com and we'll get one to you that's personalized for you and get it in the mail. But anywhere you like to get books, it will be there waiting for you. And I can't wait to see you guys in person again, hopefully very soon. Yeah, we, we told Bridget, we, you know, we, we've been trying to make plans for a couple of years now, but they got the latest COVID. Yeah. All right, well, listen, Shannon, if you don't mind just hanging out for a second because we want to take a picture. This is WMTR Radio. It's nothing but the truth with Bob Bianchi, Dave Bruno, every Saturday at 1030, podcast on Wednesday. Uh, God, I know you want to give the podcast the uh, site. Nothing, guy. nothing but the truth podcast, uh, <laughs> dot com, where you get the subscribe to the podcast, the videos, and uh, if you're listening to this on the radio, make sure you catch the video of Shannon Bream. Thank you again, Shannon. Always a pleasure. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Bye, Shannon. Thank you, Bye, Shannon. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, guys. Bye. The Bianchi Law Group, a team of former prosecutors and certified criminal trial attorneys. But here's the thing. He put himself in a box when he said... My relied on by him. CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, Law and Crime, and news leaders across the country for our criminal defense expertise. In a search warrant, you have to have probable cause that a crime's been committed and there's evidence in a particular place. When you need a law firm with courage, compassion, and the commitment to fight for you, call the Bianchi Law Group today.